Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. I'm so sorry that I've been gone for a few little days. Um, I've just been trying to lay it low, just work out what I'm going to be doing with my channel going forward because obviously the world is in a bit of a crisis right now which I'm sure every single person is aware of. This is affecting absolutely everybody at the moment, that big C word. Um, I don't really want to press on it too much other than the fact that my channel will be changing a little bit but I am going to be trying to keep on posting DIYs, craft videos, that sort of stuff to not only keep myself sane but to be able to share some ideas with you guys as well. I didn't know if it was going to be appropriate you know going forward to be able to do that because I know there's so many more pressing issues that would just need our focus right now but I figured um with the response and stuff on my Instagram where I touched on that a little bit people were really open to having some craft videos DIYs and that sort of stuff it also gives me something to focus on as well to be a little bit selfish <laughs> But yeah, so to, with that out the way basically, today I am going to be bringing you um, two DIYs which I think would be really fun to be able to gift for Mother's Day. Mother's Day in the UK is coming up this Sunday. Um, I know this is going to be a tough Mother's Day, whether or not you celebrate it is another matter as well. But hopefully this can give you a few ideas if you're unable, you know, to get out and about. Maybe even make it if you're in self-isolation, if your parents are in self-isolation. Um, if you're on lockdown, you can show it over FaceTime saying, this is what I've made you, I'll give it to you after. I don't know, just an idea. I've made up these two things. I'm really happy with them. And I think, to be honest, the materials that you might be able to find around your house already shouldn't have to buy anything else new in. I have only done two for today's DIY. Wow, well, this is a long intro. Um, but hopefully I will be bringing you another DIY video tomorrow with what I'm going to be making my mum as well. So, yeah. Without saying any more, for like ramble on forever, I'm just gonna get straight on into the first DIY. So for the first DIY, I wanted to share with you how I made these little fabric tulips. These are a DIY I've done countless times before, but never shared on my channel, so I thought I would do that today. They fit perfectly in my Home Bargains bee jug, and I am absolutely in love with them. So in order to make the tulips, you'll need some craft wire and some green cotton fabric. These are both supplies that I've had in my storage container for a long while now. I did buy the green fabric for this DIY in mind. Um, I actually got this a few weeks ago from a local haberdashery and bought a fat quarter. And that was enough to do all of this DIY. So what I went ahead and did was I took a piece of craft wire, twisted it around itself and bend it in half. I then sketched around that onto my um, green fabric to make around about an inch kind of thick rectangle like shape and then stitched that on my sewing machine. In order to turn that inside out I just cut off all the excess fabric, turned it inside itself with my finger and then used tweezers to you know pull the rest of the fabric through. Once I had that shape, I then ironed that so that it was all nice and flat, nice and neat, and I then inserted the wire and just folded that rectangle in half again. So I went over to my sewing machine and first of all, stitched the end where like the loop of the wire was in, if that makes any sense at all. So like the neat end, basically the end of the kind of rectangle, which had no opening, I just went back and forth, back and forth with my stitching and I made sure to go over the wire so that it actually stayed in place. Hopefully that makes sense. I feel like I rambled a lot there, but yeah, hopefully you can follow my instructions. Anyway, I then just twizzled the um, press foot round and then just stitched all the way down, making sure that the wire was on the far side. Basically, this is like doing piping, but instead of like the piping cord, you use wire. You can, of course, use something different if you don't have craft and wire. Skewers have worked for me in the past and old pencils works out just fine. If you haven't got a sewing machine, you can just cover those things in strips of fabric to make them green. To make the um, actual flower, I actually just took a square from a charm pack of fabric. This is a 4.5 inch square of fabric and I just fold it in both ends like so. And this is how big you know you want your flower to be you can determine that yourself but i just made mine around about two inches thick with you know the bits turned in i then ironed that down folded it into itself and then stitched all the way down the raw edge once again so now i had my stem of the flower done it was time to you know 
put together the two pieces. So what you want to do is take that square piece, well there's no longer a square piece, I'm going to call it the blue piece, the blue flower piece, and you just want to tack all the way around the edge so that it makes it almost like a drawstring, and then you want to insert the stem in like the other end so that the raw end of the stem fits out about an inch above that kind of drawstring kind of bit that you just tacked. You're then want to pull your thread so that it tightens up around and then you just want to put loads of stitches in and around that stem to secure this into place. This is really important to get a nice secure bond so you just want to go in and out and in and out and in and out, shake it all about, do it like 10 million times until you're completely happy or run out of thread like I did. So I just went in and out, in and out, in and out, shaking it all about and just avoiding that wire in the middle because remember we do have the wire still in the middle and yeah, just tie it off. Once you have your piece then secure, you'll be able to turn it the right size way round over the raw edge of the wire. This is why we put the raw edge here because then once you know you turn it the right size way round, it's inside the flower. You haven't got bits of wire sticking out the bottom of your flower, which is not very sightly. And yeah, you just have a nice little kind of bucket looking thing on the end of a green stick. You then want to stuff this shape with a little bit of toy stuffing. Um, I use toy stuffing for a poppy craft. You can use old cushions, old pillows, old toys, anything like that just to get your stuffing. And yeah, you just want to stiff it, stiff it, <laughs> stuff it very generously. You then want to take a needle and thread and pull the two tops of that, you know, flower bucket together with your hands, pinch it together and then stitch into place. I use like the seam as a kind of guide point to get that center part there. Once you have about three stitches you'll then see it pull tight, you'll then want to twizzle it around, hold it in your fingers and then take the needle up into the middle of like that opening that's left. It's easier if you push the stuffing down at this point so that you don't get any of that in your stitches. You then want to go across and then put the needle through that side in order to bring the two kind of centers of that together so they fold inwards to create this like cross like pattern almost to act as petals so you can leave it there and just stitch that close but I actually put some pearl beads on mine because I think I like the look of them it makes it look a little bit more fancier you know I then took some more of that green fabric and just stitched out some really random long leaf shapes as you would have seen there they're all completely random there's no rhythm no rhyme to this I think when they're all different it kind of looks a little bit better so I did that cut around them, cutting off all the excess, turn them the right size way around using a kind of paintbrush again and then I turned in the bottom edges and ironed them as well. Once they were ironed I then took a smaller one of the leaves because you know like I said they all turned out a little bit different so I took the smaller one of the two and just loosely like stitch that into place I say loosely I mean roughly and then on the other longer one I put that over my rough looking stitches and then stitch that down into place making sure to really really make it secure and nice and neat finish because this is obviously going to be the finished piece so this is how the bunch of flowers have turned out. I absolutely love them. Um, originally I was going to be making these for myself in like a sage greeny tone to go in this jar in my kitchen, which is why I originally bought this green fabric a couple of weeks ago. I used just shy of a fat quarter of the green cotton. Wish I bought another when I was out so that I could, you know, make another set now for myself because I've decided to make these in the ducker colour and then give them to my nan. I know my nan is like one of those people who loves me beyond words and like when I went to New York last month um she ended up getting a picture of me and put it on her sofa for the week that I was gone and um yeah so I thought I'd make her these and um drop them by outside of a house something like that just to give her a little pick me up I mean look at them they're so cute aren't they I love the little leaves I think it makes such a difference I just pop them in my jug I know my nan has um you know plenty of little jugs and stuff like hanging around but I thought these would look really nice in a conservatory so if you're watching Nan I made these for you and they're coming to your house when um I can get there <laughs> um but yeah so each individual kind of tulip I've based these on tulips um I've made these a couple of times before actually um but yeah each one has the wire and the stem so you're able to bend them you even have little droopy tulips if you want to you know do that we've got the leaves on there which I think look quite good and yeah, I just really like them. I love the little pearl detail at the top. I really like the fact that I put wire on them. I haven't done that before in any 
other times when I've made these, I've always used like a barbecue skewer. So if you don't have any craft fire, you can use a barbecue skewer, um, a lollipop sticks, anything within that realm, you know, old pencils if you're making them for yourself, I don't know. But yeah, so that's how they all turned out. I love the mix of all the fabrics that I've used. I've used some plain, some floral, and then this one here, for example, is nice and dotty. If you can hear a scratching, it's Roman trying to get in through the door. Roman, do you mind? Thank you. <laughs> um, I'm chatting to my dog an awful lot. Um, but yeah, really, really happy with these. I have made her a few things out of this particular fabric here, which is why I've included this one and based it around these colours because her conservatory has a lot of duck egg blue features. She has like duck egg blue furniture with throws and that sort of stuff and then a few other bits that I've made her before. So yeah, I thought this was a really nice little idea. For the second DIY, it's just an upcycle of a bit of a trash to treasure. So I'm going to bring you that now. It's just a little thing you can transfer to like other pieces that you may have in your home. And yeah, it might just give you a little bit of inspiration to make a little gift for someone in your life. So the second DIY today does tie in a little bit with the first one in the way that you can obviously use it to hold flowers and you can use it to hold your fabric flowers if you don't have a jug or something like that. So for this DIY, I actually used a like passata bottle we're using a lot of passata in our cooking as usual but because of you know the isolation the panic buying we're only able to get the ones in like the glass jars rather than the cardboard kind of packaging we usually get so these ones here we actually found in morrison's i did see them in home bargains last weekend for half the price so if you're after this particular jar you know where to find it so to paint the jar i just removed all of the labels soaked it overnight la, 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 like you do for your recycling anyway but instead of recycling it i thought i'd reuse it so i took my usual kind of chalk paint which is the rust-oleum furniture chalk paint in the color chalky white and i painted it in three different layers so the first layer i did it in a really nice milky watered down layer the second one did it a nice thick one and the third one i did a nice thick layer as well leaving it to dry in between each layer i made sure all the brush strokes were going downwards i then decided i wanted some stripes on my bottle so i ended up using some washi tape which i got from poundland around about a month or so ago it was in the valentine's day range anyway so i did that i put some stripes on and then painted them with some acrylic paints that i got from hobbycraft recently which were the pbo ones they turned out lovely by the way this is water green and light pink or pale pink oh they just are absolutely beautiful anyway so yeah i painted on those stripes making sure to go in the same downward motion as i did with the chalk paint on the bottle just to make sure that they would flow nicely and then i just removed the tape once those were dry once they were dry, I thought the middle one looked a little bit bare, so I took some tips from my previous videos and put on some little roses. I used the same colour pink as I used for the top stripe to make it blend a little bit better, added in some darker kind of fuchsia pink, and then with a mini paintbrush, I added some little mini leaves. Once I had roses all the way around that stripe, I just added some twine to the top of the bottle just to add a bit of extra detailing, and then I added a little bow as well. And once that was done, this DIY was then complete. <laughs> so this is how the bottle jar turned out. I absolutely love it. I've done these with like milk bottles before. Obviously I can't get hold of any because I can't go to many shops and I only want to be going outside now for essential things. So I'm sure if you've bought a lot of like jarred goods, tin goods, that sort of stuff, you'll have some jars that sort of stuff hanging around. I used a Passata jar for this and I have just painted on some stripes, put on some roses on that middle stripe, had a little bit of twine around the top, I think this is gorgeous. Um, I did try it out with a few little kind of things in the top, look at that, that's so cute. Um, I was going to be putting little daffodils in this for um, some overlay shots, um, but we only had one daffodil spring up so far, just the one. And the other lot of daffodils were Romans peed all over them and they don't seem to be coming out this year. So we don't have any daffodils either, but we do have a painted passata jar. I don't know, I think this could be really, really nice. You could fill it with um, all sorts of things. Rice might be fun if you get hold of some rice, um, some dry goods, I don't know. Um, maybe we'll all be appreciative of that this year. If not, pick some flowers from your garden, pop them in. 
Um, maybe I even make little jars for like storage. I showed something like this very, very similar in my Mother's Day gifts DIY video last year. Um, that was just a little jar with like this same sort of pattern on. I always end up making something a bit similar and yeah really happy with how this has turned out so anyway i hope you have enjoyed this video i know there was only two diys as opposed to the three today but i felt like i had a lot to say i've got a little bit of work on today and yeah i'm hoping to be back tomorrow the next day to bring you another diy video for mother's day kind of thing anyway so yeah hopefully you have enjoyed it you are staying safe you are staying healthy and i will see you very soon for another video bye Oh my god, god my gosh, I, I'm gonna tell you a secret. If my hair looks very like blunt cut or like really really bad and choppy, it's because I got annoyed at it this morning. I literally cut like that much of my hair off. Like, should I have done that? I don't know. Am I going a bit insane? Probably, but it's fine. This is what you call a um a self isolation haircut. You never know. By the end of this, I might go out with a bob. I did get a bit addictive, but why am I chatting? I don't know.